When designing parts for die cast or injection mold manufacturing, it is important to incorporate draft into your design to allow for demolding. SolidWorks allows users to include draft in several features to provide a convenient path to a well-planned design. In this demonstration, we'll be covering these tools as they apply to different modeling scenarios. But first, let's discuss how SolidWorks thinks about draft. This is a top view of a solid body. To begin adding draft, SolidWorks needs to know the direction of pull for our theoretical mold. To define this, a plane or planar face must be selected. Here we will specify the top plane. SolidWorks then defines the direction of pull as an arrow coming out of the plane. Then, SolidWorks looks at the part surface in all directions and evaluates the degree of slope toward that direction of pull arrow. To get a better look at this, we'll approach the part from the side in a cross-sectional view. Now, the plane is level with the bottom of the screen. The direction of pull is normal to this plane. SolidWorks will measure the angle of the surface with respect to that arrow. Note that it is not only looking at the outermost edges, but at points throughout the entire part. That means SolidWorks would identify these potentially problematic areas and measure their slope as well. Now, the way slope is classified is broken up into three categories. Anything parallel with the direction of pull is considered to have zero degrees of draft. A minimum amount of slope can be specified as the required draft, and any angle that meets or exceeds this is considered positive draft. Next, any angle of the surface that is sloped toward the direction of pull but does not meet the necessary amount of draft is considered as requiring draft. And lastly, anything sloped away from the direction of pull is considered negative draft. With that in mind, let's jump back to the assembly and look at how draft was incorporated into these components one at a time. Let's start with the nozzle. This was made from a boss extrude and a cut extrude. However, for both, the size of the profile changes along its extruded path. This is made possible by the draft toggle in the property manager. For both features, this toggle allows you to specify the degree of slope for the extruded surface, toggle between a nominal design and a production design, or specify between a material positive or a material negative direction. For a bi-directional extrusion, draft can be specified separately for each direction. Draft can be applied to the inner wall and outer wall in the same feature, but with some important differences. To illustrate these, let's open a separate part. Here we have one feature in the feature manager extruding both the in external and internal geometry. However, the preview reveals the internal geometry is sloped in the wrong direction. This is because the draft outward toggle indicates that material will be added to the existing surface or when unchecked will be subtracted. As a result, adding draft to the internal and external surface in the same feature creates opposing angles. Also, their slope can only be equal, which is not what our final design calls for. Going back to our final design, we can check if our part meets the requirements of our injection molding process. In this scenario, the mold's parting line exists at this surface. We will go to the Evaluate tab of the Command Manager and open the Draft Analysis tool. In the Property Manager, we'll set our required draft to one degree. 
To specify the direction of pull, we'll select the parting surface. We can see that the positive mold, which will be pulled in the direction shown, has sufficient draft. Toggling the direction reveals the cavity mold also has sufficient draft. With that, our nozzle design is complete. Next, we'll evaluate the trigger. The trigger is a thin walled part with rib features added for strength. For this part to be injection molded, we'll need draft along the vertical walls, including those of the rib. In the rib feature, we see the draft toggle which works just as it did in the boss and cut extrude features. We can specify the degree of draft and control how it propagates along the extrusion. SolidWorks is good at predicting when to check this box, but we'll check to ensure it's right. Looks good. For the outer walls, we can roll back to see that the body was made from a boss and cut extrude. Let's look at some of the limitations of using the draft option in these features. First, if we want draft along the vertical walls, we won't be able to use the boss extrude draft because the walls remain parallel with the sketch plane. We could use the cut extrude draft because the walls are normal to the sketch plane. However, there is one limitation to consider. Here, the draft is applied normal to the top plane, but rolling down to the rib feature, the rib and applied draft are normal to the rib plane. This would yield draft in two directions, not an insurmountable problem, but may result in requiring more draft than desired. This is where the draft feature can help us. Located below the rib feature in the command manager, this amazing tool allows users to select surfaces to draft in any direction. With the neutral plane option selected, SolidWorks will rotate the selected surfaces about the selected plane. This means the geometry at the plane stays untouched and the surface pivots about the line created by the intersection. Note that this works even if the plane is not touching the solid body, as with this surface. It will extend this geometry and rotate the surface about the theoretical intersection. With the rib plane selected, we can apply draft to match the direction of the rib feature. A quick check using draft analysis shows we have proper draft in both directions. And the design is set. Next, we'll evaluate the base. The intent for the base is for a blank to be molded around this split line and for the bores, holes, and threads to be added after. Let's roll back to the blank. We can see that draft has been added evenly in both directions from the split line. To get this result, a split line must first be defined. A vertical line of sufficient length was sketched on the front plane and then projected using the split line command onto the surface of the part. This effectively turns one face into two or more faces. Next, we'll apply a parting line draft. This is similar to a neutral plane draft, but it treats the parting line as the neutral plane. In other words, the surface pivots about the line. The parting line can include arcs and other geometry as well, which can offer a significant advantage over neutral plane draft when needed. Cylindrical faces cannot be drafted, so they remain unselected. The direction of pull is specified as before by selecting a plane or planar face. With the draft properly set, direction two and symmetrical draft checkboxes selected, 
we can apply the draft. There is one additional type of draft available in the draft feature called step draft. We'll roll back before the feature to see its effect on the part. When the draft is added, a step is created where the parting line is defined. Again, a split line feature was used to separate these two surfaces. Jumping into the draft feature, we can see the step draft option selected. The parting line is also already selected. A direction of pull must be specified, but take care in doing so because the final result changes based on the selection. This surface acts as the neutral plane and the surface pivots about its theoretical intersection with this plane. A step is created at the parting line to compensate. With the tapered steps option, the newly raised surface can be tapered at the same degree of draft, but in this case, we want the step perpendicular to the initial surface. A quick check of the blank gives us the results we are looking for so we can roll forward and call this complete. Lastly, there are some parts for which the draft tool will not work. Let's open the handle. We can see this was made with a sweep along a projected curve. A draft analysis reveals surfaces that need draft. We'll attempt a neutral plane draft. The feature simply fails to construct the draft. In this case, we'll need to manually add any draft required. We can do so by editing the profile sketch of the sweep and changing the parallel relation to a four degree angle. We are overcompensating on the angle to account for the change in direction with respect to the neutral plane. A draft analysis for two degrees gives us great results, and we can go back to our main assembly. Thank you for joining me in this case study where we covered multiple ways to apply draft to your design and expedite the design to manufacturing process. If you're interested in more tutorials like this, please view our YouTube channel or visit us at hawkridgesys.com.